Newbery Award winner. Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. Jerry Spinelli also wrote Eggs, Stargirl, Space Station 7th Grade, and Ringer. Maniac McGee won the Newbery in 1990. Jeffrey McGee's parents died when he was small when the train they were riding on went off a bridge into Skull Kill River. All at once, Jeffrey found himself an orphan. He was sent to live with Uncle Dan and Aunt Dot. Unfortunately, Aunt Dot and Uncle Dan hated each other. Pretty soon, they had two TVs and two bathrooms, two refrigerators, and two toasters. They lived completely separate lives, with Jeffrey caught in the middle. So, Jeffrey decided to run away. Now, Jeffrey was a very good runner. He could run along the railroad rails without ever falling off. And that's how the legend started. That's when they started calling him Maniac. Jeffrey ran to two mills. When Jeffrey met Grayson, Grayson had played baseball in the minors and gave Jeffrey a ball glove. Now, in two mills, there were really two towns. One on the east side of Hector Street is where black people lived, and on the west side of Hector Street is where the whites lived. But Jeffrey didn't see any of that. And maybe that was another reason they called him Maniac McGee. And now I'll read an excerpt from Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. Maniac's fame spread all over the East End, the new white kid, who lived with the Beals at 728 Sycamore, who ran the streets before the fathers went out, who could poleaxe a stickball like a 12th grader and catch a football like hands down who was allergic to pizza, who jumped up in Bethany Church and shouted, Hallelujah! Amen! Little kids, especially preschoolers, came from all over, bringing him their knots. They had heard about him and Hester and Lester. They had heard he could untie a sneaker knot quicker than a kid could spend a quarter. The bigger kids came around, too, for other reasons. From Moore Street and Arch Street and Chestnut and Green, heading for the vacant lot to check out the new kid to test him, to see if everything they'd heard was true, to see how good he really was, and how bad. They found out he could do more with a football than just catch it. He could run like a squirrel. He could juke, he juked and jived and spun and danced and darted, and he left them squeezing handfuls of air. Pretty soon the vacant lot was littered with blown sneakers and broken hearts. He didn't do much talking, but he didn't have to. Hands down did it for him. Every time he scored a TD or cracked a home run, hands were bent over in his face, talking trash. Do it, man. Smoke em, suckers. Poke em, joke em. You bad dude in it. You the baddest. High-five me, dude. And they high-fived and low-fived and back-fived and hands down would laugh and laugh. Maniac loved the trash talk. The words were different, but in some strange way they reminded him of church. It had spirit. It had what they called soul. Pretty soon he was talking trash with the rest of them and pretty soon he brought it home. Mrs. Beale was pressing her famous meatloaf into a baking pan one day when Maniac started talking his trash to her. Her eyes shot open. She straightened up, What did you say? And he said some more. At first she couldn't believe her ears. When she did believe them, she didn't like it. She didn't like this boy bringing the vacant lot into her kitchen, and she didn't like how it fit in his mouth. So she put a stop to it right then and there and slashed his trash talking mouth. Her lips started to quiver before his. Before she could say, I'm sorry, he was hugging and squeezing her and burying his face in her chest and sobbing, I love you, I love you. And he loved the quiet times after Hester and Lester went to bed. That's when he'd read Amanda's books. When he had gone through about half of them, he figured it was time to tackle the Encyclopedia A. The problem was, Amanda was always reading it, and she vowed she wasn't giving it up, not even to Maniac till she read everything from Aardvark to Aztec. To make matters worse, the supermarket offer had expired, so there were no other volumes. The more Amanda would not let go of the A, the more Maniac wanted it. It reached the point where she had to hide it wherever she was, whenever she wasn't reading it. Unbeknownst to her, Maniac always found it. He would get up even earlier in the morning, read it by flashlight for a while, sneak it back, and go trotting with Bow Wow. And sometimes Maniac just sat at the front window, being on the inside. Maniac loved almost everything about his new life, but everything did not love him back. Maniac McGee was blind, sort of. 
Oh, he could see objects all right. He could see a flying football or a John McNabb fastball better than anybody. He could see Mars Barr's foot sticking out, trying to trip him up as he circled the bases for a home run. He could see Mars Barr's charging him from behind to tackle him, even when he didn't have the football. He could see Mars Barr's bike veering for a nearby puddle to splash water on him. He could see these things, but he couldn't see what they meant. He couldn't see that Mars Barr's disliked him, maybe even hated him. When you think about it, it's amazing all the stuff he didn't see such as big kids don't like little kids showing them up. And big kids like it even less if another big kid, such as hands down, is laughing at them while the little kid is faking them out of their fruit of the looms. And some kids don't like a kid who is different, such as a kid who is allergic to pizza, or a kid who does dishes without being told, or a kid who never watches Saturday morning cartoons, or a kid who's another color. Many act maniac kept trying but still couldn't see it this color business he didn't figure he was white any more than the east enders were black he looked himself over pretty hard and came up with at least seven different shades and colors right on his own skin not one of them being what he would call white except for his eyeballs which weren't any whiter than the eyeballs of the kids in the east end which was all a big relief to maniac finding out he wasn't really white because the way he figured it white was all about was about the most boring color of all but there it was, piling up around him, dislike. Not from everybody, but enough. A maniac couldn't see it. And then, all of a sudden, he could.